come on in you guys i want to do my wednesday walkabout in the backyard now it's not a hundred percent garden tour perfect but then you guys have seen my flaws before i am going to show you the progress that i've made and tell you what's coming up and also try to give you a few hints and tips along the way of some good deals that i found recently so i cleaned up the huge trashy mess that was um, over here what I call my boxwood theater and I had all of these terracotta pots they were just in a big pile and they were very messy now I tell me what you think in the comments below but I find terracotta pots just eminently beautiful just inherently beautiful I think that they I just love their earthiness whether they've got something in them or they don't so I just took one of my uh, TV tray tables put this basket also that I got um, at at a junk store and I just have kind of staged them here I can easily grab them I think they look pretty whether or not they've got anything in them I also want to point out to you guys this Euonymus topiary that I made a long time ago. This is emerald and green. It's a large leaf Euonymus. And look, it is starting to put out new growth. I'm so happy because I've lost so many plants that I'm glad that this one nevertheless is going to come out. So I've given it a good feed. I'm watering it. And I would say really in a couple of weeks it should be pretty much full now I'm not going to show you my porch yet because I'm still playing with my topiaries and assessing some things whether or not they're going to come back but I'll do kind of a, a makeover of my back porch so you can see how I'm styling it and how it comes together but if you'll come this way with me Stuart's going to show you in the distance what I have been working on and I've been working on my geranium theater, I, I should say my geranium slash begonia theater. So in late spring and early part of the summer, the best, uh, which is I think the best time until fall to really enjoy your geraniums, that's when I like to have it front and center. And I like all colors of geraniums, but when I am displaying them all together in moss, then I like them all to kind of be in the same tonal range. I love this color right here. This was just a hanging basket that I plopped into a terracotta pot. And here's one of those things where I, if I find something um, that's useful in my garage or whatever I, it's, I'm hard pressed to throw it away and you'll see this little stand here that had it's in two pieces there's a stand and then there's the pot and actually this stand went to another pot that broke but I found that I could also through the drainage hole I could use it on on different terracotta pots so I saved it and I like it because typically in the center I like things um, elevated a little bit. I'm getting ready to plant a bunch of scented geraniums in here and I'll probably show you guys how I do that a little bit later. The fragrance is just unbelievable. Now here is what this is the deal I wanted to show you. So heartbreakingly I had two large standard green mountain boxwood uh, topiary. Stuart, if you would just kind of show that one there. Out of the three, I believe this is the only one that made it. I've got one that's definitely dead and one that I'm, I've moved to my driveway to put it in intensive care to see if it will revive or not. But I needed something to put in these two large concrete pots. Now, Right now, this area looks like it's in full sun, but it will get a considerable amount of shade, not as much as it did before because of the damage on the redbud tree, but it will get a good amount of protective leafy canopy to protect these absolutely gorgeous variegated boxwood. Now, these typically are not nearly um, let's just say they need a lot more shade. They're not nearly as sun tolerant as other varieties of boxwood. Now I got these at Home Depot. Stuart, if you'll show them the tag, it shows a variegated spiral 7498. Now these would have been 
let's just say, exponentially more expensive any place else. They had a good number of them. If you're in the Oklahoma City area, I got these at the Home Depot on May and 59th, thereabouts. And I'm, I am not a huge fan of the spiral form in topiaries. I'm not really sure why, maybe they're a bit too formal for me, but these had already grown out and they were fluffy enough. So I'll probably just let them continue to grow and either I will prune them into double balls or maybe just into cones or whatever. But for $75, these were a huge steal to replace the other two. I might ultimately go back with the Green Mountain on standards, but those are harder to find. And I think I may have told you they require a trip to Dallas to South, I believe it's Southwestern Nursery there. So anyhow, for right now, this is going to, to just have to suffice. I haven't put them in these large concrete pots yet because I just haven't gotten around to them. I just found them. But immediately, if you go back, and I hope you do, if you look back at some of my previous season's videos, you'll notice that this effect with these variegated fluffy boxwood is significantly more feminine in tone, I think, than the large Green Mountain boxwood balls on stems. So it's gonna give it just a little bit of a different aura here. So then, because this looked a little bit more feminine from a design standpoint, and yes, the wind this spring has been unbelievable and it is still with us today. Um, so anyhow, because this all had a little bit more of a feminine vibe, I decided that this was where I would put my geranium theater. And this is just a two tier glass table that comes apart. I got it at Pottery Barn years ago and I have just staged some um, of these pelargoniums, some scented geraniums, and just some plain terracotta pots. I really like the way it looks and I especially like this placement here because it's the first thing that you see when you walk in that back gate. So Stuart, if you don't mind, slowly turning around past the table towards the gate I entered and you can see that it's directly in the sight line of that gate. So it's a wonderful focal point, a much more feminine frilly focal point than I've had in the past right here. And I've got some other uh, geraniums, some other scented geraniums, some things I'm getting ready to pot up and just haven't yet. Now, one thing that I keep on hand as I'm working with my geraniums and potting up my scented geraniums is I always have a bucket. This actually has a glass liner in it but I keep a bucket with water here. So as I cut off the trimmings, I can immediately put them into a trug with water so that then I can root those cuttings or I can use them in an arrangement indoors. I just don't want them to go to waste. So you can't tell it too much from here, but in the distance, you can see that there is some new growth that's coming out on the Nandinas. And I would say in a couple weeks, especially if we get some rain, which keeps being promised to us, but then they keep taking it away. A good rain would really help. Now, Stuart, if you don't mind showing this Chinese, this is also a Chinese snowball viburnum, but it's a little bit different variety than my other. This is the one I think of as a florist snowball viburnum because these are the flower heads you see so often in flower arrangements that are green. This year, whether it was because of the cold or because they're getting a little bit more sun, I'm not sure, but the flower heads on it this year are far larger than they have been in the past. And this is one of those, if you go back into the bowels of my YouTube channel, you can see that I did a working in the garden video where I showed how I pruned that last year. The hydrangeas are just kind of in waiting as are some other plants here that I'm gonna do something with. Now, Stuart commented a little while ago that that's the first time he'd noticed that great big old dead trunk in the back. And that's because for the past five years, when we've been working together, that was completely obscured by all of the Nandina 
in the foreground. You never could see it because the Nandina was always leafed out and it camouflaged it. Now I keep it there for a couple of reasons. One, it would be expensive to take down, but also because it was one of the maybe two or three things growing in this backyard when we bought the house 30 years ago. And it is the matriarch um, of all of the other red buds that you see here. These are all babies that came up that were volunteers off of this grand dom of a red bud tree that was here when we first moved in. So I also leave it there um, just out of sentimental value. So anyhow, moving on pretty soon, there will be a beautiful green backdrop here and I can't wait for that because it really affects the way everything looks. Um, and then in the foreground, I know you guys have seen some of these plants over and over again, but every day is a new day in somebody's garden. And this, this is an all that glitters viburnum. And look, it's starting to put on some flower heads. These aren't nearly as, uh, oh, as dramatic as the others, but they're really beautiful. And look here, you guys. Say hello to one of the first ladybugs of the season that I've seen. Hope you are eating some aphids or some other nefarious actor in my garden. Okay, I want you to come over here a little bit. Oh, Stuart, would you mind? Let's let me back up for just a minute because now is definitely Columbine season, and this gorgeous yellow columbine here which is just so sweet they think this was actually gifted to me by the homeowner of the recent video that i did with roger when we were planting her window boxes and she gifted me some of this yellow com columbine seed and i believe i gifted her some of this purple or blue Columbine. And I got this years ago from a beer garden. I, I was a klepto and I stole just a few seeds from that beer garden. Father, forgive me. Um, so now speaking of that kind of purple um, or blue, if you come over here, you can see all of this, these gorgeous plants that are all here together in very much a tight tonal range. Stuart and I just shot a video actually that uh, for QVC showing those baskets that are going to be part of my, my gardening line. But look at how gorgeous all of these are together. This is a Southern Living Agapanthus. This is just a beautiful, I can't remember the name and I've lot, I don't have the tag with me, but I got these at Home Depot. Sadly, they probably bloom on old wood. And then I've got some wave petunias, some calibricoa, some salvia forensia. I'll list these below and some more. Oh, here we go. This is ever amethyst agapanthus from Southern Living. And I think those are absolutely gorgeous all together. Especially because, especially now because the ajuga is also blooming blue and the Spanish bluebells are blooming blue. Now, I know I made a promise to show you this corner, um, but it's really not finished yet and I'll tell you why. <laughs> It's because I need to plant the hanging baskets that go here. And so, uh, and I'm gonna do that, but I wanna show you how I do it. And that's gonna be a separate video. And I just haven't gotten around to that yet. So I wanna show you how I plant these hanging baskets and how I go about deciding where I want to put them. So that will finish the makeover of this corner. And I want you to kind of see it in its totality. So I'm not there yet. Um, this is one of those Eugenia that came back out of the greenhouse. And look, you guys, it is putting out all sorts of new leaves. And I am feeding the heck out of it with just a liquid feed. And again, I bet in a couple weeks with some warm temperature, temperatures and hopefully some rain, 
it will be completely butted out. I showed you the Deutzia. Stuart, be careful backing up. You've got some things there that I don't want you to trip over. This Deutzia, uh, someone said that they had planted it and it didn't do very well, that they went with white spirea instead. I think um, bridal veil or bridal wreath spirea probably is a little bit tougher. This one is emblematic of my three strikes and you're out strategy with a plant. I bought this years ago and it took three times for me to find what its perfect situation in the garden was. And I would describe that as being on the edge of shade with a dedicated bubbler sprinkler head right at the base and then a hard prune after it blooms. After it blooms is when you want to prune your spring bloomers. Let them have their show. Look at how, look at the arch of that and how beautiful that is, Stuart, especially with a gentle breeze. Not a heavy, heavy wind, but a gentle breeze. Oh, and just as I said, that up kicks the wind. Okay, other stuff is coming out here, but I, I wanted to answer another question. And that is, so how long do I work in the garden um, every week or every day? Well, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, for the past three days, I have worked out in the garden practically nonstop. I'm doing that because the season is changing and it's spring. Do I do that all of the time? Oh my goodness, no, I don't have that luxury. I wish I did. Uh, but I have worked out here pretty solid for about the past three days, mostly getting all of my container plantings in order and positioned where I want them to be. Now for me, that is the most fun and sometimes the most perplexing thing because it's like putting the pieces of a puzzle together what pot goes where, what plants go in what pot, and in what area of the garden do I ultimately want them to reside. And this year it was a little bit more problematic because I'm not really sure what the sun and shade conditions are after the storm this year. So that's something that will be a very dynamic process. I'll keep moving them around as, as I see fit. Okay, another question you guys always ask is, do I have synthetic turf? And this is for new, um, new followers on the channel because I've answered it many times, but because people so frequently ask, I do have, it's a high, high quality, highly realistic synthetic turf. I have it in the front and in the back, it's on a bed of gravel. Um, there's no synthetic infill. It is so easy to take care of. I don't do anything to it other than occasionally I will use a blower to blow off a gravel that I spill or seed heads or dirt or whatever. But I don't even really have to do that. It is so easy to maintain. And I like this Litholy uh, blower. It's battery, all of my tools, I like to be battery operated. This one, is great. Now, I don't find it too heavy, but if you want something that's even lighter, this is one that I recommended for years. And this is a works. It's only a 20 volt, so it's not as powerful, but it's great for getting the leaves off of my gravel deck, which is another question you have. How do I get the leaves off of the gravel? I basically just skim the surface of the gravel and that cleans it up very nicely. So I'll put links to both of these below. Now if I want to get aerobic, the best thing I have found to remove anything that, oh especially gravel, that might kind of get into the turf is I just, I can use this, I think this is a isn't this a carpet rake, Stuart? A carpet rake? I actually got it when I got the turf. But I can easily clean up my messes with this and I get a good aerobic workout. So that is, that's a nice thing. Um, this year I've showed you how spectacularly the barberries have performed. 
I have fallen in love with them anew, but a lot of you have asked about, aren't they prickly? Well, yes, they do have barbs on them, and they are kind of prickly, but if you keep them, I, I do prune these once or twice a year to manage their size, and I also love to cut some of these fronds to put in flower arrangement at flower arrangements. So if you prune it fairly regularly, you'll find that those, those barbs aren't nearly as prickly when they are still young as when they're mature. So that will be, that's kind of a, a, a little tease to, I guess, to promote them. This is, I've got one, this is a, a lime green one, this is golden, and then look at how gorgeous the foliage of that orange rocket looks and together they're spectacular and then what I've got planted in between them is a baby gem that's also from Southern Living and then flanking the other side is another orange rocket so this tableau is beautiful now I, I want to point that out this year because in the past I have cut these back really hard um, but this year, I think I'm not going to. They're taking up more space. I like that. Some of the things that were growing underneath them were a little bit more finicky. I love the drama of them. And so I think I'm gonna allow them to be a little bit larger and a little bit more pendulous because I like the way that that looseness and airiness looks, especially when the wind blows. And it's a perfect color echo over here to this wajilia that's getting ready to bloom in a hot pink. I have a little bit of pruning on the ends that I need to do, but you'll notice how last year the pruning exposed the trunks below it. And there is a perfect color harmony with the golden money wart that escaped that basket, that container right there, and grew underneath. So I'll, I, I'll leave it for a while, and then if it looks like it's getting a little bit overly aggressive, I might remove it. Now, speaking of blue, I got these from Color Blends, you guys. These are the dearest thing, and these come back year after year. These are Spanish bluebells, and I'll put a link to these below but they are just gorgeous. There's a little tuft of them right there. And actually I have little tufts of them throughout the front and the back, but especially in the back. And you can see Stuart, if you don't mind, over here, you can see that there's a good number of them. This is another area that I'm, I'm working on. I had to cut back some of the abelias really hard but you can see that they're coming back. And then this will be your before. This old boxwood back here, it is a mess right now. And I'm going to show you how I turn something that's not such a much into something a little bit more beautiful. And slowly but surely the Nandina in the background are all starting to leaf out. Maybe by next week on our next walkabout, it will be full again. Now, Stuart, there's something behind you, so don't trip. Look at these gorgeous viburnum. Don't trip on the rake, Stuart. We told Stuart we've got too much to do, so neither one of us can get hurt or get sick <laughs> because we've got too many things to do. This is one of the beautiful blueberries. This is a southern living plant and I will show you what I'm going to do with these but that's a gorgeous blueberry and it was actually also part of our our blue and purple montage that I had. And then probably in some cases where I've made the most progress is I'm starting to stage all of my pots. So I've got these gorgeous lavender topiaries. I got those at Home Depot. Um, I think they might still have some. And I can't remember, I think there were 29, or 25. Everything is more expensive this year, you guys. 
and then look at how beautiful the protege is looking. And I've got my two Silverado Sage topiaries that are back in the corner. And then all the rest of this over here, you guys, you can see the big plump heads of the allium. And this is going to be a working in the garden video where I'm going to show you what comes next to make this really beautiful so it will shine its most bright when all of these alliums and hopefully the poppies are in bloom. So that's kind of what's going on right here along with an ambulance in the distance. Hopefully nothing too serious. Say a quick prayer you guys. And now Stuart will just end up if you would by doing a slow pan back towards the house. And one other thing that I'm, I hope to do a video for you guys is how I will be pruning my rose. It hasn't bloomed yet because it got frostbit, but I'm hoping I can encourage a bloom for this season. So you guys stay safe and stay well, and I will see you next time.